Hi, everyone, and welcome to Keys to Creating a Great AI Strategy. I'm Cynthia Stryker, Director of Marketing for Waterfield Technologies, and your host. Okay, so deeper personalization, improved CSAT, lower service cost. AI is providing a lot of great benefits to the contact center. You know, it's no longer limited to just simple FAQs, but it also doesn't need to follow an all or nothing approach. You know, what we've learned is that there, there really are no hard rules as to how AI should be implemented, but there are best practices to consider when it comes to defining your AI strategy. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So how does AI apply to your contact center? Is it really more efficient and lower cost than traditional speech services? And how our clients are using this technology and what type of results they're seeing today? So we're going to jump right into the discussion, but before I hand things over to Kevin and Sarah, I just want to remind you guys, we are live and we want for you to get the most out of this session. So feel free at any point to drop us a question using the Q&A button there at the bottom of your screen. Thanks, Cynthia. Kevin Moss here. I lead the strategic consulting efforts at Waterfield, uh, really helping customers like you put together a strategy that makes sense around AI and emerging technologies in, in the contact center space. Sarah? Thanks, Kevin. Hi, I'm Sarah Reisma, and I am the Director of Customer Experience and Design at Waterfield. Uh, I've been in this industry for over 21 years. Uh, I started on the development and technical side, but I quickly moved into design because I care passionately about end user experience and the overall quality of our speech systems. Over the years, I've designed hundreds of interactive voice systems for our customers. Uh, I worked in all verticals from healthcare to finance, retail to government, uh, and across multiple channels. So I'm excited to share my expertise with you today. Thanks, Sarah. So as we dive right in, um, I want to start by kind of pulling back the covers on why we're even talking about all this. And at its core, the reason we're all talking about how do we modernize our contact centers and how do we embrace digital and all these things is because customer expectations have fundamentally changed. Um, you know, you can read the bullets on the slide and I think they all resonate pretty well, but the best example I have of this is how many of you have ordered a package from Amazon in recent memory? That's probably pretty much everybody here, right? And when you think about that experience, it's very different than the days of you know ordering from the US Postal Service where you get a notice that it shipped and it kind of goes into a black hole for some indefinite period of time. And then, hey, it showed up at my door. Um, that's the experience that we're kind of delivering to our customers today for the most part is this disjointed, something happens and, and we finally follow up. But let's unpack the Amazon experience for a second. When's the last time you wondered about the status of your order? You click buy, you get an email confirmation immediately, you get a text message when it's shipped, you get an alert in the Amazon app that it's out for delivery, and then all of those smart devices in your house have a little green circle on them saying, hey, your package has been delivered. And then you log into your account and you see a photo of that box sitting on your doorstep. There's no question any point in the process about what the status is, where we're headed and you know what to do if you have an issue or a return or anything else. So given those expectations, that's the lens we need to approach customer experience from today. So when you look at today's contact center landscape, we have all of our customers who aren't having this Amazon-like experience with us. We've got a new channel seemingly every time we turn around, whether it's SMS or web chat or WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or, or whatever's next. And we have all these disparate systems for marketing data and customer relationship management and order tracking that we're trying to somehow connect to create these experiences. And so as contact center leaders, it can feel a little precarious, like walking a tightrope to balance demands to cut costs and improve operational efficiency while driving digital adoption and finding ways to meet these new customer expectations. Um, it's a, a pretty challenging place to be. And I suspect that that's part of the reason that a lot of you are here today is to help uncover answers to 
how do I balance this equation? So the good news is you already have the data that you need to create these smart experiences, but we really need to unlock the power of AI to help make sense of all that data to drive these experiences. So at this point, a lot of you are probably saying, okay, yeah, this is another buzzy AI is the greatest thing ever type webinar that doesn't really give you any insight. But I wanna unpack that for a second because I don't think anyone really takes the time to explain what is AI and why should I care and how does that apply in my space? So um, let's take a step back. At its core, artificial intelligence is all about understanding data. And so historically, we've done it the hard way by writing business rules that try to cover the content. So if we were going to try to write some business rules that describe this dog, we'd say things like, oh, it's got two ears, it's got a cute nose, there's some fur, etc. Right? And we would think we were doing a pretty good job of describing this animal. But where all these manual processes that we've used historically fall down is that a lot of times our business rules apply to more than what we were expecting. In this case, this cat has two ears and a cute nose and four legs and fur and all these things that I just used to describe this dog. So what if there's a better way? What if instead of saying, hey, manually write some rules to describe this use case or this set of customers, let me give you a set of examples that represent the target that I'm going after and let intelligent systems create patterns that you and I could never write manually ourselves. Um, you know, in this example, pattern recognition from an AI perspective does things like measure distance between eyes and the shape of the nose and how long the snout is and all these things that you and I, even if we thought of, would have a very difficult time replicating manually on our own. That's exactly what we're talking about when we talk about using AI to power conversations with our customers. We combine the machine learning, those pattern recognition rules that help us create more intelligent decisions with natural language processing. At its core, our language is really just a set of rules. Adjectives modify nouns, verbs show an action that's taking place involving a noun, and those rules are pretty well documented through the fields of you know, language and, and science. So combining that set of rules called natural language processing and the machine learning using pattern recogni recognition and examples, putting those two things together is a really powerful tool set that helps us deliver more intelligent experiences in the contact center. So what does that mean? Well, in order to understand the power we have to go back in time a little bit. So where we started back in you know, the dawn of IVR is this idea of dual tone multi-frequency. Hey, I push a button on the keypad, it makes a sound, and the computer can understand it. So we build systems that map numbers to meaning. For claims, press one. For billing, press two. For underwriting, press three. And this sounds like a great idea until you enter the modern era of the cell phone. In order for me to navigate that menu, I have to take the phone away from my ear, wait for the screen to wake up, find the button, push the button, get it back to my ear before the next menu plays, and hope I'm fast enough. Not to mention, if I have more than three or four or five options and two or three or five submenus, pretty quickly I can get lost in this phone tree and end up just button mashing zero to try to find a way to talk to a human. Who's had that experience before? Anyone? Me too, right? So how do we make this better? I've got a brilliant idea. Let's use words. You can say claims, underwriting, or something else. Now, this helps because we're not having to take our phone away from the ear, or wait for the screen to wake up, push a button, and try to get back. I can use my words but we still have this fundamental problem of creating this structure that forces customers to understand my system and how I've built it and try to navigate along this 
wide, deep tree that I've created to try to get people to the right place. So there's got to be a better way. And that's where we apply AI. So rather than forcing a customer to understand my system, what if I could build a system that understands my caller's needs and routes them to the right place based on what they said in their own words, using open-ended questions like, how can I help you today? Let's take a look at what this might sound like in real life. To begin, tell me your five-digit zip code. 55120. OK, thanks. Using your phone number, I found a recent order. It shipped via UPS on March 22nd, but due to inclement weather, your package is not scheduled to be delivered until April 3rd. Would you like a text message with the tracking information? No. OK. If that's all you need, you can just hang up. Or tell me what I can help you with today. That uh, April promise delivery date sounds about right if you live in Texas currently, given the uh, breath of ice storms down there. But uh, you understand how understanding what the customer needs and being proactive can help us. Sarah, how else would we use this? Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, with natural language, you do not have to fit a certain menuing structure like you mentioned before. You aren't limited by the number of options you can have on a menu. So you can service more things. You can simply ask the caller how you can help them. I think one of the beautiful pieces about AI is that it can pick up on multiple pieces of data in one phrase or sentence that is spoken or written. Uh, and it can understand a variety of words. So what does this mean? Um, it shortcuts the time to self-service. So if you want to have uh, faster and easier self-service, uh, you really want to start to look at this. We have to ask o less overall questions here. So in the clip that you just heard, there's um, more going on than what can I help you with today. We've used data at the very beginning of the call to determine that uh, this person has an order and that there has been an exception on the delivery of that order. And that's probably why they are calling. So they really had to answer very few questions to actually get the information that they need. So less overall questions, and there's a, less, um, a lesser chance that the user gets fatigued and drops out of the entire process. Uh, it makes these tasks quicker and easier, and they're more natural. We don't have as much of a learning curve with natural language and AI, as we do when we put someone in the middle of a menu structure that they don't know and they don't understand. And then it really allows us to focus on automating uh, what you can well, and then freeing up your agents to take the more complex calls. We know that there are some tr industries that traditionally uh, the answers are hard. Think of healthcare and claims, right? If you want to automate claims, but you're telling a member that they uh, their claim was denied, they're going to want to talk to someone. So leave those more complex situations for your agents and automate what you can well. And I think the best part is that AI learns. So if we look at traditional natural language systems, there is a large amount of data that needs to be collected at the beginning of one of these projects. It needs to be collected, transcribed, and tagged. And that takes a long time. Um, at the output of that, there's a statistical language model that's built. So like I said, the downside of that is it takes a long time. Uh, these projects average 12 to 24 months in length in the past. Uh, and of course, uh, the technology is imperfect. I mean, all technology has a bit of imperfection to it. But in this case, it really only knows the words that you capture or words that are really close to them, maybe a plural, um, maybe adding ED on the end. So if you capture something like, I want to make a purchase, but then later someone comes in and says, I want to purchase shoes, uh, there's a lot lower recognition and confidence that they are going to match to that per that purchase intent uh, because they added the word shoes and our system didn't know about shoes. We didn't have that in our data collection. 
So what's the contrast here? AI, on the other hand, is always learning. So you can actually start out by teaching it about a few phrases um, that might map to an intent of, let's say, shop or purchase. So you can tell it, I want to buy clothes, I want to buy shoes, I want to buy Nike. Um, I don't have to boil the ocean here. I don't have to think of every single thing the caller is going to say. I can give it some representative samples and let it learn from there. So then let's say that we've taught the AI about, I want to buy shoes, I want to buy clothes, I want to buy Nikes. And then someone calls in and says, um, let's say that you have a new product that came into stock. We don't have to necessarily teach the AI about that. Someone calls in and says, I want to buy the new Adidas Boost sneakers. So I can tell you almost with certainty that traditional natural language would fail. Uh, there are way too many words that are different in that utterance versus what we captured. But AI uses what it knows, which is a lot, and it uses that to draw conclusions that Adidas Boost is just another brand of shoes like Nike's. And sneakers and shoes actually are pretty much the same category of clothing. So thankfully, gone are the days that we have to train a grammar or a speech engine to know about every single possible word that we want recognized. That's hard and it just takes too long. So now let's look at a specific example of this in action. And, and this is from one of my real customers, um, a recent and current customer of Waterfield. So overall, this customer realized that their basic touch tone based IVR was struggling to keep up with high volume during two particular periods, back to school season and the holiday season. So on top of that, they only had some really basic self-service in their traditional touch tone IVR. And the end result was a lot of calls that were overwhelming agents, again, especially during these high volume times. Their existing solution had about a 15% containment rate going in. So let me tell you a little bit more about what we did. We used IBM Watson speech to text and AI atop our BlueWorks IVR platform to implement a new modernized voice first natural language application that is driven by AI. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Watson sounds familiar. Uh, where have I heard that before? And well, it probably is. And if you're thinking that, you are probably a fan of the game show Jeopardy. So 10 years ago, almost exactly in February 2011, IBM's Watson computer competed on Jeopardy against the TV quiz show's uh, two biggest all-time champions, Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter. And Watson? Watson won. So what exactly is Watson? Well, it's a computer running software called DeepQA. It was developed by IBM Research. And while the initial part of their uh, project and challenge was to actually win on Jeopardy, the broader goal of the project was to create a new generation of technology that can look through unstructured data and find answers um, way more effectively than our standard search technology has been. So we used that same technology, which IBM since 2011 has certainly uh, been adding to making better and making it more accessible to your typical call center, typical user, typical company. And uh, we use that and we increase those service to not only cover some of the basic order status things that they were covering before, but to answer questions like, where's my order? Or you said my package is delivered, but I don't have it. Uh, they can also track loyalty points and rewards, track gift cards and transactions. I can send in a return and find out if that return was received back by the company. And it will tell me when I can actually expect a refund. And then with all of that, we integrated this with timely SMS messaging, providing up to the minute tracking details. So uh, you heard in the vision clip before that uh, if someone asks for an order status or is interested in an order status, we can actually send them a link. And that link is tied to some software on a back end that will actually update anytime that package is scanned or goes through the next part of its journey. 
So not only did we do this with voice, but we actually also extended this to chatbot using the same AI technology and content behind the scenes. So the voice and chat channels actually share the same intelligence uh, and phrases, things like, I want to buy shoes, I want to buy sneakers, right? They're on the same, uh, using the exact same AI Watson technology. And then we also uh, have both of those channels that are multilingual, providing service in both English and Spanish. So this customer really wanted some results fast. Uh, one thing that we run into as we approach, let's say, spring and later in spring is that we're up against the retail holiday season. So you wouldn't think about, you know, thinking about the holidays and the holiday shopping season when you're into, let's say, April. But that's really the reality is that we need some time to put together these projects. So with the holidays um, season quickly approaching, we decided to split this up a little bit. We first implemented voice, and then we used that to implement chat on a slightly different timeline. So this way, while we finished up the chat implementation, uh, the voice channel was already taking calls and producing results. And, and I think that's a really great point here is you, you don't have to boil the ocean. You don't have to do it all. You can, you can do voice and chat. You can do only voice. You could do maybe a few use cases and not everything. Uh, and you could honestly do chat first and totally ignore voice and maybe add that in later. Whatever is going to work best for your business. So I want to go back to timeline a little bit. Um, this entire project took around seven months start to finish. So voice completed in about five and a half months. So remember what I said a little bit earlier about a voice only natural language project traditionally in the past taking 12 to 24 months to complete? Uh, you can absolutely see the stark difference here. I, I think it really speaks for itself. Uh, not only is there a significant speed to market increase with these types of technologies, but along with that, there's inherent cost savings. You are employing a project team over a shorter duration. It's really as simple as that. Uh, and you can actually get your system or a piece of your system into production sooner and start, start earning ROI right away. So I guess you're wondering, did it actually work? Are people actually using the system? I would be. Um, it definitely works. You betcha, as we say in Minnesota here. Uh, we doubled the containment rate of the old IVR. Uh, and for chat, that was completely net new. So they had zero containment to start with, which is, which is a great base because you can always increase but we're actually getting upward of 50% containment rate for chat. Um, so that is people that start a chat on the website, type something in like, where's my package? And actually get through the conversation with the chat bot and don't need to go to an actual live agent. So I think all of these things for this particular customer and, and many customers we have like them, it's definite proof that AI is really changing the landscape of our business and it's changing the landscape of yours. You know, Sarah, that's a great story. And, you know, the natural question is, well, okay, I'm not a retailer, so can I still take advantage of this technology, right? And the answer is yes. Um, so we worked with a, a national emergency roadside assistance uh, provider to replace a, a legacy speech application with one that uses AI. Um, this one using Google Dialogflow instead of IBM Watson as the speech engine. And um, it's important to note that there is no right answer in terms of which engine to use or which IVR platform to use. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of Amazon Lex versus IBM Watson versus Google Dialogflow in terms of the technology you choose for an AI provider. And we can integrate those across all of the major platforms, whether that's Genesis or Avaya or our own Blueworks product. And so um, this isn't a you know one solution set approach, but rather a, a method for success that you can apply to really any contact center footprint. And 
in this you know emergency roadside situation, we showed dramatic improvement from a recognition perspective right away. And what happened is a couple months went by and, and the customer reached out and said, hey, Waterfield, this solution is working even better than it used to. We're seeing higher containment rates and you guys didn't do anything. Like what changed? And, and the answer is artificial intelligence continues to learn and build more accurate models the more examples you have of customer speech and accurate processing, the better it's going to be able to predict what a customer intends as they say something that's not necessarily in the existing rule set. So going back to our example of the dog photos, if I give you 20 examples of what a dog looks like, you have a pretty good idea. If I give you 100 or 1,000 or 10,000, you start to notice more and more detailed patterns emerging that help you be that much more successful in your recognition. And Sarah, I, I think you were working on a project for a, a city government use case as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, think of city government and some of the the issues that they need to deal with as far as people calling in. So a lot of cities have a free one one service and it's really, you know, you can call, you can report something, you can tell them that there's an issue at a park, maybe there's broken playground equipment, there's a broken picnic bench, you've noticed graffiti, the weeds are getting out of control, right? There's so many different things that people might be calling about. Um, so we put together a system that actually answers the phone when someone calls 311 in this particular city, and it is an open-ended greeting. What can I help you with today? And we manage, like I said, information all the way from what are the pool hours at this particular pool to, you know, there's too much noise in the park. And so uh, it does a couple of things. First of all, it, it knows about approximately 80 different um, issue types. And we started with one department, it's their parks and rec department. Um, that is one of the largest as far as the things that they service because they service all the parks, all the lakes, um, anyone that wants to rent something, a zoo within the city, all of that sort of stuff. And so if you ask for pool hours, we will play back a knowledge base article. We'll know that you asked for pool hours and we'll tell you what the pool hours are. We'll tell you where to find that information, right? Um, but if you are saying something like there's a broken picnic bench, in this park or there's graffiti or the electrical is not working. Um, we can actually, we actually interface with a backend system that's really common with uh, governments and city governments. And they can actually open a ticket directly to go to that backend system. So they say something like, I want to report a down straight light. And we would say, you know, okay, I can help you with that. Give us the location. You can say an address or you can actually say like the name of a park or something like that. So if you don't know the address of the park that you're at, you can just say the name. Um, we're able to then send that location in the latitude and longitude over to a backend system, tell them what the topic is. Hey, a broken streetlight. And uh, that is able to go over to the people that service those tickets directly. So that's without having to have the caller really talk to anyone and without a huge burden. Um, it's really, you know, what can I help you with today? And if you're specific enough, then you say something like a down street light. Okay, I can handle that. Um, what's the location? And that's about it. Uh, it's really, uh, it's really easy on the caller to go ahead and do that report. So. I think the question that everyone asks at, at this stage is, okay, these are some great use cases, but what does that mean for my organization? And the reality is we've seen this before and we'll see it again. AI is very much a journey. Rather than trying to boil the ocean and implement a an, you know, massive system all at once in, in one approach, we think it makes sense to start with a workshop. Let's identify a couple high value use cases and prioritize those based on feasibility, how easy is it gonna to be to implement, how fast can we get there, and how much value is it gonna to return to the business? And let's get a proof of concept going and get a quick win under our belt to show value right away and build momentum in the project. 
And the 311 example is a perfect use case for that, where we started with the parks and rec department and are going to continue to iterate through the other departments within that city government over time. Because trying to do everything at once, it splits focus, it makes projects take longer, and delays the time to value for the project. Um, in the retail example, it's it's no different where we started with voice and then added the chat channel later in order to make this a nimble and fast process rather than a long drawn out enterprise project that takes a year and a half and ends up going over budget, over time, and not meeting the desired expectations because we tried to do everything at once. And so, you know, here, this is so flexible that we've seen typical use cases of, you know, the first one or two use cases in a proof of concept mode go from idea to usable system in as little as six weeks at prices around $25,000 or more. And that is orders of magnitude faster and more efficient than the classic 12 to 24 month speech projects that, that we were familiar with. Um, what we've seen is that AI is putting conversational speech applications in place at directed dialogue pricing, making these types of advanced use cases available to even mid-market organizations that historically would have been prohibited by a half a million dollar effort just for the open-ended question at the main menu. Now the whole project costs less than that. And that's a, a huge win for um, really transforming customer experiences to match the expectations that our customers have today. Kevin, can I, can I jump in here? We've got a few questions that have come across that I'd like to, to get out of there before we have to close out for today. And I think, you know, the first one really, um, Sarah, this one might be best suited for you, but the question is, if I want to implement an AI natural language um, IVR or chatbot, do I still need a speech designer? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. I know uh, in the industry, speech designers are a little bit few and far between. It's it's kind of been a niche industry. So, I guess I would ask: um, Would you take your car to your doctor for a tune-up? Uh, would you go to your mechanic for plastic surgery? Right? You you wouldn't. And so, uh, I know you know tongue in cheek, obviously, but you would want someone that specializes in the service you're looking for. And it's really the same with implementation of speech and AI systems. So you want someone to guide you through the process that knows what they're doing, um, that has done this before. Uh, AI implementations are inherently faster, like we just talked about, and they do some learning. We, we talked about that several times. They can get better. But you're talking about a software piece where you need to wrap a full solution around that individual technology. Um, and part of that is you need to know how to interact with the user. So while the user may say things and they're more easily recognized, you need to know what questions to ask them, how to ask them, um, what do you do if the user doesn't respond in a way that you want them to. Um, that's where a, a buoy designer, a speech designer can come in and, and take really an idea uh, that you have and, you know, create it into a solution and a design that takes really from good to great. Um, I think everybody within their organization wants an increase in, you know, CSAT, customer satisfaction. And really, uh, that's my team's number one responsibility uh, at Waterfield when we're working with our customers. I want to make sure that uh, the, the system that you want in the beginning that we design is a system that you get at the end. Uh, my team's responsible for end-to-end -end quality as well as design. 
So another one that we have here, and I, I'm probably going to have a couple of sales guys in the audience slapping their forehead wondering why I'm asking this, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. Um, again, it, we, we touched on it a little bit earlier around, you know, is it really less expensive than traditional speech services? So I know you touched on it from the implementation standpoint of, yes, it's less, um, less manpower, it's less time to implement the solution. Um, what about beyond that point, you know, from a usage standpoint, how does it, how does it stack up? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that, that Kevin had said earlier and that really resonates and, and is kind of our theme is we like to say that you're going to get uh, tier four speech, right? Natural language, um, AI driven speech at tier three prices. So that would be your directed dialogue. You know, what would you like to do today? You can say, claim status, get a new ID card, make a payment, um, that is directed dialogue. So you'll actually you know, pay more of that price and get the more advanced technology. I think uh, the other thing with the implementation timeline being quicker, less people over less time is just inherently cheaper. Um, but you'll also start reaping ROI sooner. And I know that's just a big deal for a lot of companies. This is a this can be a significant investment and you want to start to see sort of the fruits of that investment as quick as you can. And uh, like I said before, with one of our, our customers, uh, seven months to have two channels in, um, that's really quick for them to start to get their, their ROI back from that investment. And along that same line, Sarah, I think it's important to realize that this is usage based. You know, this isn't just I have to buy X number of ports and I, I have to size my ports for my busiest day of the year in order to make sure that I have adequate coverage. It's you pay for what you use in terms of fractions of a penny per minute. And as a result, you have the flexibility to scale to meet your highest demand days without having to pay annual licensing for all of those related ports for the entire year when you may only use them for a couple of days. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of times people in the past had to buy a significant amount of speech licenses. If we go back to the retail, um, the retail example, they have to be able to service their most important time of the year, which is the holiday season. But then those licenses are sitting there for the other nine months of the year and not getting used and costing a significant amount of money. So yeah, that's a huge savings as well. Um, there's a question too, Sarah, here just around, you know, are there standard design templates that are readily available? So if someone's looking to, to take on a project like this, is there something available out there that, that they can just download and say that'll take them from a uh, DTMF or maybe a uh, directed dialogue to an AI kind of open conversational flow? Or, you know, does that really vary by customer, by project? What, is, what does that look like? Yeah, I mean, there aren't really like templates that can say, okay, this is exactly run this and take from a DTMF all the way to AI. There's obviously steps in between there. Uh, I think one of the things is that we have worked with a lot of different verticals. So I have expertise in many other projects. Let's say if you wanted to do a banking app. And what does the what does the natural language look like behind that? What are the things that are most easily automated? Transferring money, how would that work, right? So I think we have maybe templates that help the design get started because we've done a ton of payment applications before. We've done banking, we've done healthcare. So we use all of that as sort of a, a acceleration to get started and best practices across our customers. Uh, if you are customer A and you want a payment system and over here is customer Z and we've done that many in between, those payment systems are probably gonna sound and look a lot alike because we've really refined what that process looks like and what we know works best. So yeah, unfortunately not really a template um, to like convert apps or anything like that, but I think there is some well-worn paths if you're working with the right experts. And especially if you're ready to embark on this AI journey and maybe 
aren't sure where to start or how to prioritize the use cases for your specific team, um, that's where we can help. You know, we do a, a half day workshop focused on helping customers like you build their business case for AI as an organization. And, you know, we can use that to help you establish the roadmap and, and prioritize based on what's going to deliver the most value to your team um, rather than generalities and templates, but really something that's tailored to, to your organization. And so um, that's certainly a, a great opportunity to take the next step as you start your journey towards AI. All right, thank you. So we are coming up on time. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call it for today, but I do wanna say thank you to everyone for joining. We hope that it's been worth your time, that you've gotten some good information out of this. Um, keep your eyes open in your email. We'll send out a link to the recording here in the next couple of days, along with a couple of links to some resources that you might find handy. We have a, a, a guide to getting started with AI that kind of goes a little bit more in detail and provides some worksheets. Um, that you can take a peek at there in terms of how to develop that first use case. Um, we'll also send a link to the to the AI workshop. So if you're if it's in, if it's something that's on your radar and you're looking to get started with here in the near future, you know we can always have a conversation there. So again, thank you and uh, have a great day, everyone.